The water that fuels these explosions starts as snow and rain. It drips underground through cracks. Eventually, a few kilometers beneath Yellowstone, it approaches a magma chamber. Here, the water heats to more than 250 Celsius, 482 Fahrenheit. That's much hotter than the normal boiling point of water, 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The water stays liquid because the enormous pressure underground keeps it from expanding into steam. This superheated water can then erupt back through cracks in the bedrock. Most rocks are strong enough to withstand the pressure of the hot water. Near the surface, the water erupts into Yellowstone's geysers. But sometimes the pressure of the water suddenly overcomes the strength of the rock. This can happen when the water quickly gets much hotter, increasing its pressure. That causes a steam explosion. But White and Muffler think something different is fueling the explosions at Pocket Basin. The underground water isn't getting hotter. Instead, the rock is weakening because of some sudden change at the surface. Pocket Basin likely exploded at the end of the Ice Age, about 13,500 years ago. A lake would have covered the area at the time, held back by an ice dam. But eventually the ice melted. The dam broke and the lake overflowed. If you could dump all that lake water all at once, the pressure on the system would be reduced and it would explode. With less weight on top, the hot water underneath would explode into steam, Muffler said. Muffler and White found nine other large hydrothermal vents scattered across Yellowstone. The scientists found the Mary Bay Crater at the northern end of Yellowstone Lake. At 2.6 kilometers, 1.6 miles, wide, it is still the largest known hydrothermal vent on Earth. Morgan has been studying what might have caused some of these big explosions. What he found suggests they could happen again at any time. Morgan teamed up with Pat Shanks to explore the northern part of Yellowstone Lake, near Mary Bay. Shanks is a geochemist with the USGS. The workers spent days in boats crossing the lake. Using sonar, they mapped the undulating lake bed, and they used seismic sensing to reveal layers of mud and rock beneath the lake bed. Every night, Morgan and Shanks looked at a newly printed map of the lake bed. It was an eye-opener. The map revealed a large crater southwest of Mary Bay. Called Elliott Crater, it is 2,600 feet, 830 meters, wide. That makes it the third largest hydrothermal vent on Earth. The team sent a remotely operated vehicle into the lake to explore the newly discovered crater. People crowded around computer screens to watch a live video feed. The crater's inner walls towered above the murky water. Foot-long suckerfish hovered above it. They lined up like airplanes. Why? They like hot water, Morgan recalled. The mapping also found numerous small explosion craters on the lake bed along with more than 250 hot water vents. We found that the lake was much more hydrothermally and tectonically active than anyone had ever thought, Morgan said. Here and there, round domes rise above the lake floor. These mark places where hot water seeps out. 
Minerals from that water slowly bind sand and mud into a crust. Eventually, the hot water can get trapped beneath that crust. That's when a bulge forms. Morgan believes Elliott Crater formed when one of these pressure cookers exploded. Other lake floor domes could explode someday, too. Many are smaller than umbrellas. But the North Basin Hydrothermal Dome is 2,500 feet, 750 meters, wide. Right now, it towers seven stories above the lake floor. Hot water is still gushing out through its crust. But over time, that's going to change. That open space is going to close up. Once that happens, it's a perfect candidate for a potential hydrothermal explosion, Morgan said.